So the first case is a 70 year gentleman who had come with bilateral flank pain. He had fever, vomiting, and pain was more on the right side when compared to the left. And he has been a diabetic for past 10 years on insulin. When he, when he was attended first, his BP was on the lower side and uh, he had fee high grade fever. We did an ultrasound and both the kidneys had multiple stones, probably a stagon cattle on both the sides. When the laboratory investigations were done, his hemoglobin was 9.2, counts were raised, sugars were deranged. He had renal failure with creatinine of 7.6 milligram and urea of 114. Uric acid was also elevated. His urine routine and culture showed E. coli, which was sensitive to meropenem. This was the uh, plain CT KUB, which we had done. Here you can see bilaterally, there are stragon calculi and there's some air pockets, which are seen on the right kidney. Again, on the axial view, we can see some air pockets with bilateral stagon calculus. The Hounsfield unit of the stone on the right side was 1410HU, and on the left side, it was 1170HU, and bilateral stones were present in the kidney with the right sided Wang Seng class 2 EPN. So, Dr. Subnis, uh, would you, we'd like to start with you, and uh, I want Dr. Otas to join, please. And you may ask questions to the faculty and continue with the discussion. Yeah, so the first question in a situation like this, I would like to ask Dr. Otas, that what would be your way of decompression? Obviously, this patient requires a decompression. Now, the whole discussion and the debate which is going on across, across the board is to digestion versus PCN. So what is your choice in a case like this? Well, in this case, uh, we have to be very careful because we have uh, bilateral Stockholm stones uh, with uh, severe infection uh, caused by multi-resistant bacteria, which is uh, sensitive just to meropenem. So I think uh, we have to treat this uh, case both by uh, diagnostic, but also preparing for a future treatment option and I would, uh, in case like this, propose a PCN as an initial step uh, in treatment, because in that way, we can uh, also create uh, more PCNs in aim to uh, prepare for multiple tracts, as these are complex stones, which cannot be solved by just one access. And uh, I think this, in this way, we could... Uh, so is, your choice is a PCN because uh, same track can be utilized subsequently for the PCNL and obviously because of the past and other thing, it will drain properly. The related question to that which I want to ask you is that suppose this uh, stone was at PUJ, a stone uh, which was eventually amenable for the uh, subsequent RIRS and the patient has come to you with the same findings of the uh, suspected pyonephrosis, some air pockets. Would your choice would have been different uh, than the PCN or you still would have uh, done PCN rather than stenting? If subsequent treatment you would have managed by uh, the RIRS. So what would be the choice in that case for decompression? Yes, uh, these days there is a huge debate on going uh, whether to, to, to drain by uh, stent or even sometimes ureteric catheter or to place a uh, PERC uh, PCN uh, in aim to and uh, there is a lot of favorable factors uh, in the uh, direction of stenting, uh, despite of placing the PCN. In the cases with the, uh, uh, we have to uh, come to every case uh, individually and to see what are the risks and uh, what we want to achieve. If we want to have a, a good control of infection, uh, maybe sometimes we have to be more aggressive Right. And, and uh, I think uh, I, I am afraid that this case needs our aggressiveness in aim to achieve effectiveness. Okay. Now, one, one last question I want to ask Dr. Amelia is that if you are suspecting uh, the, uh, uh, the, if there are air pockets, does it really change your, uh, uh, the method of decompression or it does not matter at all? I think it would. Air pockets. I think it would because it's a sign of a possible gas formating um, bacteria, and therefore it would um, uh, indicate emergency. 
and um, an, emer that an emergency decompression would be paramount to uh, clear the infection because probably the, the system is so obstructed that otherwise the antibiotics alone would not be able to do the job and clear the infection. So I would suggest, as, as has been said, to put a nephrostomy and uh, treat aggressively with the selected antibiotics. I think, I think uh, just to summarize what discussion has taken place, that in a case like this, when you have the air pocket suggesting the emphysematous pyelonephritis, you have the stagon stone, you are having the high count, very high creatinine. I think best would be to decompress by PCN and the DJ would not be the uh, choice as per the experts here. So that I think is the uh, the, the outcome and the, uh, the advice of the experts. Can you go ahead with the case? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, if it is possible, just uh, one a little uh, additional comment. Uh, Maybe yeah. in these cases, we can perform PCN under X-ray control and create uh, access for a future uh, PCNL treatment because in that way, we will create a tract which will be epitalized. And when we proceed with the bigger sharia of the unplugged sheet, uh, the possibility of opening the vessels and, going, uh, and the bacteria entering uh, the, the circulation will be less. And I think in this way, we can prevent septic comp intraoperative complications because right, we, right. We, can, we can have uh, infected stones. Dr. Paul wants to come in. Yeah. It, it is Paul. even puncture of the renal capsule, whether you get the pus or not on the right side, but just puncturing the renal capsule helps a lot in decompression, particularly in emphysematous pyelonephritis. So undoubtedly, the drainage is better with PCN on the right side. Regarding left side, I am doubtful because managing, you don't know how long you are going to leave the PCN tubes. Managing bilateral PCN becomes very difficult. And maybe the left side is not so greatly infected at present. So I will put a ureteric catheter and aspirate and see from the left side. If there is a clear fluid, I will leave a DJ stent on the left and do a PCN on the right. So I, I have a question to Sabni, sir. Once we do the PCN and decompress, do you wait to clear the stone during the same admission or you give them a time and ask them to come back later for the clearance? Yeah, so it all depends on uh, how much is the output, how much uh, rapid is the decrease in the creatinine because he has got a 7 creatinine. His counts are high. So once you put a bilateral PCNL, we would put bilateral PCN. So once you put bilateral PCN, you also would know that uh, how much is the output from each side, how the pus is getting cleared up, how much is the uh, rapidity with which the creatine has fallen. And if everything is fine, if everything is favorable, then we don't have to send the patient in the same admission. We can go ahead and uh, do PCNL. Okay. Thank you, sir. So let's go to the next case. Here we have a 56-year-old gentleman you know, who had come with uh, bilateral flank pain, more on the right side. And compared to the left, he also had nausea, vomiting. He had history of urolithiasis in the past and had a URSL done six years back, no comorbidities. When we did ultrasound, he had mild hydroeurotonephrosis on the right kidney with the proximal uretic stone of 2 LMM. And on the left side, there was a partial stagon characters involving the lower and middle calyx. Laboratory investigations were almost normal. There was no rise in the counts or creatinine, but uric acid was elevated. Culture was negative. This was a CT image where you can see right mild hydroeurotonephrosis with the stone in the proximal ureter or on the left side, there is a partial stagon calculus. And the Hounsfield unit was 894 on the right side and on the left side, it was 935. Over to you, sir. Yeah, so here, uh, Jishan, one thing, what's the creatinine of this patient? Creatinine is normal, 1.13. Normal and both sides hydronephrosis, yeah. okay. Now, the one question which I want to ask, I think Dr. Baskar also is here. Uh, Baskar is left or he's still there? No, I'm here. Sorry. So, Dr. Baskar, uh, one question which comes to my mind and I want to ask the, all the experts here is that when you have the uh, patient like this, is uh, NCCT your investigation of a choice or it's a CT, IVP, especially when the creatine is normal? 
because most of the guidelines they show that if uh, the kidney is all right and if there is not much hydronephrosis, then the choice is NCCT. So, what is your opinion about that? I personally don't insist on a urographic phase unless it's going to change my management or unless I'm worried. I mean, in this case, the right side, it's a middle ureteric stone, upper ureteric stone. It's not going to change my management. On the left side, the only time I might want to do it if the anatomy is in question. If the anatomy is not in question, then I, 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 we don't normally do it. The only thing that we sometimes do it is if you're not sure, especially in partial or full staghorn, is if you are suspecting the, the kidney function. So you might need to want to do a, a renogram to look at the split function of how much this kidney function is. But I won't insist on a urographic phase uh, normally, especially in this case. So, so, so question, additional question to that, that asks, when do you suspect there is a problem in the anatomy? Because you have a patient whom you have done sonography, and you have uh, suspected a uh, stone. So now you have to decide that uh, what is the abnormality, whether there is any abnormality or not. So that's the time where you want to advise whether it's an NCCT or CT urogram. So as you say, if the renal function is okay, and uh, if if you suspect, you know, sometimes very, it's very obvious it's uh, anatomically, you know, it's a horseshoe kidney or if it's a pelvic kidney or something like that then I think it's good to know what's happening and any extra detail is helpful in avoiding complication. In a straightforward case, unless there is a, an overlap, so you know you think that the bowel is quite close by or they've had previous surgery. If they've had previous surgery, especially PCNL or open surgery, sometimes we have a low threshold for urogram. Generally speaking, I would say five to 10% of all our PCNLs would have urographic phase. So the answer to your question is almost very rarely we will do urographic okay, phase. Okay. So the question next is- Basta, to... uh, friend, can, can I just uh, make a comment on this? Yes, please, please. please because please. I think it's, um, uh, we need to clarify something because we say also in the guidelines that a contrast uh, a urography will be needed uh, before you treat a stone case. But what we actually mean is not only is not um, necessarily a CT urography beforehand. You need the contrast even as the retrograde form inside to I mean during the, the PCNL. So you need to identify the PC system in a way. I agree with Basca that you need to do it preoperatively in those cases that uh, seems to be peculiar for some reason, or um, let's say you um, suspect that is a caliceal diverticulum or an anterior calyx or previous operations, etc. However, before you do the, the, the operation, either ureteroscopy or PCNL, you have to identify the PC system and you can easily do it in um, the straightforward cases by the retrograde urography, the first step of um, the PCNL or the first step of uh, ureteroscopy, just to clarify this issue, because I think we always perform urography uh, prior to the operation, as I said. It doesn't matter if it is uh, beforehand, I mean, uh, like a CT urography, yes. uh, IVU in the past, or you do a retrograde during PCNL. Right. Dr. Otas, Dr. Otas, uh, how would you treat this patient? Would you uh, treat both at a time or you will treat one by one or which one you will uh, treat first? Or you uh, treat both, not in the same admission, but in subsequent admission? Yeah, uh, I think it's clear that uh, with the ureteric stone, we have to treat uh, to the right side. Uh, what is interesting here that we have uh, uh, 800 calcium units and uric acid stones, so even in hemolysis could be an option in this uh, in this uh, in patients with the uh, uh, uric acid stones, but uh, in the, we cannot uh, use hemolysis when it, this is obstructive ureteric stone. So uh, first of all, uh, there is a need to to perform this obstruction in on the right side. Uh, if if there is no uh, obstruction, we can go straight forward. Uh, for the ureteroscopy and the treatment on, on the right side, or if you want to be less aggressive, you can uh, do pushback of the stone into the kidney and then perform less aggressive uh, way of treatment. But if it is a, 
uretic stone, uh, if it is uric, uric acid stone, and if the stone is in kidney, uh, we can also perform a shockwave under the ultrasound. So there, there are more options and uh, we have to select the, the best one in every particular case. Uh, Dr. Andreas, uh, you talked about the, uh, uh, the recurrence and uh, the, uh, the uric acid and various other things. Uh, what are the indications for the uh, chemolysis? Ota said uh, that if it was, if it, if it was a non-obstructive stone, the small stone you would have treated with chemolysis. Now, do you practice chemolysis? What is your experience of uh, treating uric acid stone with chemolysis and what regime you follow? That's, that's a very good uh, question, actually, for, uh, for I think the only, the only indication that is currently uh, being in use, let's say, for chemolysis is um, uric acid uh, stones uh, currently. So oral uh, chemolysis is uh, really a must, and we always forget about giving alkalinization for this, uh, for this um uh, cases because we always prefer as urologists to do a ureteroscopy and get rid of the stone. You can do chemolysis also with uh, by putting a stent if, if the stone is big and um, you can also wait and avoid uh, intervention. However, it takes time, approximately one month for one centimeter stone in size. So um, you have to have a patient uh, uh, urologist and the patient patient also, because it takes uh, time. Having said that, uh, we have to take it from the indication and uh, the, the, the treatment really depends on uh, the indication, as you said. If you have some uh, uh, fever with a stone, then uh, everything is, um, uh, the, 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 the practice can be different. Uh, but I strongly believe that um, we, we are missing the dissolution therapy, especially for uric acid stones, because we prefer all of us the quicker uh, uh, solution of a, ureter a straightforward ureteroscopy. Regarding the dissolution therapy of um, other stones, uh, percutaneous chemolysis, I mean, um, it is very rarely nowadays used because of the side effects they, they do have. And we have to consider, though, that uh, the side effects and all the um, chemolysis background, uh, scientifically, I mean, comes from uh, studies uh, back in the 1980s and 1990s. So we may have, as urological community, to re-see the percutaneous chemolysis to... to, to to identify those cases, let's say we all know that infection stones are very imperative to clear the kidney from every single fragment, which is which really can be very difficult for a complete stuck on stone infection stone uh, to, to do it even for for even with um, multiple punctures of the PNL. So I think in these cases, although very difficult to do it. I think there is, they, they, it's going to be a little bit of space for percutaneous chemolysis. We need to do more right. studies uh, up to date. Okay. Uh, Jishan, you can go ahead with the uh, subsequent. So the third case is a 50-year-old male. Uh, he had come with left flank pain. There was no fever, nausea, vomiting. He had history of alcohol consumption for almost 20 years. And both his kidneys were shrunken. Right side, it was 18 to 5.5 centimeter with the 1.5 centimeter calculus in the pelvis. And on the left side, there was a 1.2 into 8 millimeter calculus in the lower pole of the kidney. His laboratory investigations were normal. No urine culture was negative. So this was the CT image. You can see a 1.8 centimeter stone in the pelvis with three small stones in the lower calyx. And on the left side, there is... Uh, 1.2 centimeter stone in the lower pole and mild hydronephrosis was there on the left side. So, Dr. Otas, now what is your approach in a case like this? I believe this is a perfect case uh, to emphasize what Bashkar and Andreas previously made a comment on is a contrast study because uh, if we want to, to emphasize and uh, see what is the reason for mild hydronephrosis on the left side. That's that that, an important point. 
that that definitely won't be the the stone in the lower pole because it's not non obstructive stone and uh, we have to see what is the reason of uh, obstruction mild hydronephrosis and I think definitely in this case we uh, need contrast study prior to the, the decision how to treat left side. On the right side, I think uh, more, or more or less this is clear, but uh, from the point of view how to treat the left side, I think uh, we should uh, uh, perform additional diagnostics on this patient. So, so Dr. Bhaskar, you agree that this is a case for the contrast study because you it's a lower calcium stone and uh, you would like to know uh, more details about the anatomy, which can be done only by contrast to decide whether you are going to go for which modality of treatment, because you have so many modalities available. I think, again, you, you, I have to agree, yes, you might decide, but I put into context what the patient wants, you know, how old are they, are they suitable treatment, because if it's, a, so on the right side, I would say, yes, you need to treat. On the left side, it's a low pool stone, you, observation might be an option if they want to. But I'm, I am, as Uta said, why is there some hydronephrosis? I'm not expecting that, you know, do they have a structure, you know, what is going on? So for that reason, I would like to have it, but not necessarily always for the stone reason. Okay. If they are happy with observation, then I may not do that specifically for that. So if, if, if they want intervention, then you have to decide yes. whether it is going to be for RIRS, whether it is appropriate for PCNL, mini perk. So in that case, would you like to know the details or uh, you decide only on the... Uh... So in a standard case, just for the low pool anatomy, I have to agree, I don't do it. And the reason for that is up to 1.5 centimeter, I would always try a URS first, even in the lower pool. Beyond that, I would counsel the patient and then mini PCNL would come to my mind for specifically lower pool, but I won't automatically do a contrast study. Dr. Pal, how would you approach in this case? This is an 8.5 centimeter kidney, yeah, 9 centimeter kidney, but creatinine is all right. In this case, to me, the left kidney does not appear to be healthy. Probably it may be, and the stone also, the appearance wise, it does not look like it lo looks like an infection stone or uh, some metabolic stone. So, particularly for a better functioning right kidney, I presume I must do something for the renal pelvic stone on the right side. So, certainly I will go for a whatever technique uh, is best uh, in my hands. I will do a mini PCNL and uh, remove the right stone. Left side uh, uh, studies have shown if you just follow these patients. 70% of the lower polar stones in two years of time, they become symptomatic and they need some treatment. So certainly we should manage the left-sided stone also, but at a later stage. First, I will manage right side and secondly, left, I'll see later on, maybe after two weeks. All right. Jisan, you want to bring out some more points? Is there any role for ESWL in this patient? <laughs> I think uh, well, Imal went away. Otherwise, uh, let us let us ask Amelia. Yeah, well, in COVID time, it can't be uh, excluded as an option. Consider you would like to prevent your patient having GA or maybe two operations under general anesthesia. But this is a quite a large stone. It's borderline for uh, lithotripsy, but you can consider the right pelvic stone being of uh, in a good position to uh, attempt at least one or two sessions of lithotripsy and see if it has some effect because it has a higher um, possibility of uh, likelihood of passage of fragments being in the pelvis rather than the one in the lower pole, which is more unlikely to um, for the fragments to pass. So I would attempt it, yes, in consideration of COVID time mainly. Okay, so I have one question. To, okay, Dr. Paul wants to say something. Regarding CT urography, I tend to agree completely with uh, uh, Bhaskar. In the previous case also, who was a 46 years old male, there was a right ureteric stone. Now, if the CT urography you do, and even if the kidney appears to be non-secreting, non-visualized, still I will. I am going to do for uh, going to go for a ureteroscopy for that case, even if the CT urography says that it is non-visualized. 
so the treatment policy doesn't change whether you do a ct urography or you don't do the previous case if you see the anatomy was very simple and clear in four films which you have shown everything is very clear it is a normal anatomy there is no wall rotation nothing of this sort so i will restrict my ct urography neither in the second case nor in this third case it is not going to help me in any way that is what i feel so i have a question to all the faculty if you have to go in not this case if there is a partial stag on in lower end uh, uh, middle calyx if you have to go in which is your ideal calyx which puncture do you go for which is your favorite calyx and why the favorite calyx would be where you can clear the maximum stone burden and you can enter from one calyx to other calyx so that would be I, I think it is not appropriate to just have a fixed notion that I will always go through the lower calyx, middle calyx, or upper calyx. It is the calyx which is uh, uh, through which you can uh, clear the maximum stone burden. That would be the preferred calyx uh, for uh, for the large bulk stone. Like for the previous case where we have a partial stagon, I'll show you the image. What would be your approach, Rajin? so so in that case i think uh, the middle calyx is not visualized the lower calyx is completely filled with the stone so i would go with the middle calyx clear of the pelvic stone and from with the little angulation you can go and clear the lower calyx stone so that would be the approach dr pal if you draw two lines from the middle calyx and lower calyx they are interacting at 90 degrees so if you go from the middle calyx it is not the little angulation to reach to the main bulk of the lower calyxial stone i always see where the main bulk of the stone is draw a line if you draw a line from the lower calyx the whole stone from the lower calyx the whole bulk of the lower calyx as well as about 70% of the pelvic stone everything can be removed through the lower calyx first once you have done the debulking you have removed the stone you just puncture the middle calyx and push this middle calyxial stone into the main stream and then there is no need to make another track from the middle calyx that is a very small stone that can be pushed with the help of saline it will come in front and can be picked up so my choice will be to go through the middle uh, through the lower calyx in the straight way remove all the calyxial as uh, mid, uh, lower calyxial as well as pelvic stone then give a saline push to the middle calyxial stone okay yeah, dr otas uh uh bashko has also the comment but i will be very short i think uh, not necessarily uh, the optimal uh, calyx for access contain the stone because sometimes uh, we can select uh, the lower posterior calyx which can uh, make a good access to the renal pelvis but also to the anterior part of the uh, of the of the lower calyxial group so in that way we can treat uh, and have a Uh, access with uh, less torque on uh, for uh, approaching to the renal pelvis but also to approach uh, to the uh, anterior uh, calyxial part of the stone so not necessarily we have to puncture uh, the stone uh, if we are trying to create uh, the optimal access that's uh, why uh, i insist uh, on retrograde pelography uh, prior to puncture because uh, i always uh, create under ultrasound and uh, dependent on x-ray or ncct i have a plan but the uh, definitive plan is always uh, in the or any last comment amelia uh, so but i think this uh, in this case a lower pole puncture could be difficult uh, mainly because the we always always prefer to put, to try to um put the guide wire through the ureter so uh, down to the ureter and in this case because the lower pole is completely obstructed by the stone i guess this could be difficult so i i would personally select the middle calyx and then uh, try to clear everything from there with a guide wire in the safety position and a safe way to dilate the calyx but this is my personal opinion the latest comment was not on this particular case uh, we are now having on the screen but generally so it is uh, for this uh, particular case i agree with uh, paul uh, about the access but uh, if we go to the to previous case uh, where we had uh, on the right side uh, you can see that sometimes uh, 
lower pole puncture can uh, can collect both renal pelvis and uh, and calicial stones. Hey Amit, may I make a comment on yes, this? Sure, sure, sure. Because I think I think we have to give some rules to um, uh, the people that they are following us uh, today. Uh, Amelia has she is right actually in. Uh, 50% of the cases. And what I mean is it really depends the selection of the calyx is not a straightforward answer to your question. I think it depends on two issues. The first issue is what Amelia said. If there is enough space for the guide wire to be driven down to the ureter or to the pelvis or to the upper, just inside the PC uh, system in a safe uh, uh, way. So, the, occupa the occupation of the, of the lower pole calyx, let's say, uh, by the stone is uh, imperative. But the other issue also is the anatomy of the lower pole uh, um, group of calyces, because you have to remember, uh, just to give you an example, that the lower pole is drained by different and multiple infutibulums, where the, the upper pole calyx is drained 100% of the cases by a single infutibulum. So for those who are experienced with upper pole puncture, they always realize that although it will be difficult because of the pleura, because of the, um, uh, uh, of the ribs, then the, the guide wire most of the time goes very easily down to the ureter or down to the pelvis. So I think the anatomy should guide us if you are seeing from uh, the CT scan or from your retrograde that is a very complicated lower pole um, group of calyces, then you should avoid and you should go through the middle calyx. And remember, you don't always have to torque the, uh, the rigid instrument. You can use a flexible scope to, uh, reach, the, the, to reach the the stone in the lower pole. So I think it's very important to keep in mind that two things are very important to selecting the calyx. First of all, whether there is enough space, the stone leaves you a space to go uh, inside. And the second thing is the anatomy of the, low, of the, of the calyx. Thank you, Professor.